I should have put a rope around this. The catch doesn't hold so good, sir. Sergeant Duff. Yes, sir. Where's my son, Denny? I'm sorry, sir, but he's saying goodbye to his pony. Well, get him here. The stage is ready to leave. Yes, sir. Hey, you can tie those things on. The boy will be here in a moment. Don't get moving pretty quick. It won't get far. The road is still clear through to Laramie, isn't it? It won't be for long. The Indians are moving up from South Fork. Sir, with your permission, I'll double the escort. I can't spare the men. We might be under heavy attack before they could return. Begging your pardon, sir, but I can't find Master Denny. Lieutenant Reed, take a detail and round up the boy. Get him aboard that stage on the double. Yes, sir. All the times to pick to wander off. Excuse me, sir, but I don't think he's wandered off. You mean he's hiding? Yes, sir. And when he hides, he hides good. <sighs> Take his things off the stage. Yes, sir. Pass me down the boys' pond mantles, will you? Come in. What is it? It's me, sir. Ronald Dennison, Jr. wishes permission to speak with the Colonel. Permission granted. What have you got to say for yourself? Nothing, sir. Denny, do you know what it means to disobey an order from your commanding officer? Yes, sir, and I have put myself under arrest. I'm reporting as a prisoner, sir. Sir, what in heaven's name made you do it? Denny... You know that I'm responsible for the lives of my men. Yes, sir. You also know that every soldier kept out of action because a non-combatant needs protection lessens the chances of all the others. But I'm not like those helpless women, Dad. I'm a soldier. Denny, a soldier would have obeyed my orders. Now, do you really think your actions were those of a soldier? Not exactly, but I wanted to stay with the men. As a resident of this post, you're subject to the same discipline as any other person under my command. Yes, sir. You will therefore confine yourself to your quarters until I decide upon your punishment. Yes, sir. Dismissed, Denny. Steve Holland to see you, sir. Steve Holland. Steve! Hi, Ron. Hello. Oh, gee, it's great to see you again. It goes for me, too. Say, those eagles look mighty nice on you, Colonel. Oh, thank you, Steve. But to tell you the truth, I never knew two little silver chickens could weigh so much. <laughs> Denny, you've been dismissed. Get to your quarters. Yes, sir. Come on, you scallywag. Don't tell me the Army's recruiting him that young. No, Denny's my son and a mighty active boy. Sometimes I think it takes a regiment to control him. <laughs> His mother was killed three years ago in an Indian raid. Oh, I'm sorry, Ron. It's been hard for me not to hate Indians. I can understand that. But sit down, Steve, sit down. Tell me, what brings you to Fort Sanders? I was sent here by Commissioner Briggs. Oh? He's the uh, head of the Government Peace Commission. Uh, this letter will explain everything, Ron. Oh, Steve, this is Cronin, one of the best scouts this regiment ever had. Glad to know you, Cronin. You here for the fighting? If our plan works, there won't be any fighting. Steve here is a friend of Chief Eagles. Chief told me he was willing to hold a powwow here at the fort with the Colonel. Well, that's hard to believe. That old Indian's smart. Too smart to walk into an army camp on any white man's say-so. 
Colonel, I'll have the chief and his party here by sundown. Good luck, Steve. Tell the chief I'll guarantee his safe conduct. Right. Those feathered sticks are an Indian warning, meaning danger or a trap. Found them in the center of the trail on the way to the fort. Why would they be placed there? Someone who knew about this meeting tonight didn't want it to take place, Colonel. I had all I could do to persuade Chief Eagle and his son Running Wolf to come here. Steve, my friend, we come. This be trap. You have nothing to fear, Running Wolf. We may talk. Good. Then maybe we can save the lives of many braves and many soldiers. your people will not try to avenge the death of Chief Eagle until the man who murdered him has been captured and you can go back to your tribe. Running Wolf now, Chief. No give word to white men who talk with two tongues. Colonel, there's not much chance of your men catching up with that killer. What's going on here? I have no choice but to keep him a prisoner, Steve. I don't like telling you your business, Colonel. But if you don't turn Running Wolf loose at once, there won't be a soldier left alive in this fort by tomorrow night. I don't agree with you. Lock him up in the guardhouse. Yes, sir. Chief Eagle's dead. 
And his son, Running Wolf, is ready to hit the warpath just as soon as we can furnish him with enough rifles. Take a look at these boxes. Shipment came in just a little while ago. Good. Running Wolf will pay us plenty of skins for these. Chime bells are ringing, ho oh, you lady. Mockingbird singing, you lady. Sleep my little lover, you lady. Up on a summer's eve. Ho out on the mountain, so happy and free, there lives a maid, she's waiting for me. Out on the lake, we'll drift with the tide and hear those chime bells ring. Chime bells are ringing, ho yo lo mockingbird singing, yo lo sleep my little lover, yo lo up on a summer's eve. ho do de ho do do ho do do invention. That is the Smiler Burnett patented journey shortener. Journey shorteners? Yes, sir. For quick jumps and quick marches. I wouldn't be a bit surprised what your pappy'd find some new medal to give me when he sees this invention. Say, hey, by the way, where is the colonel? I'd like to give him a demonstration. Sign a detail of that wagon. Good, Colonel. You sure went places, Mr. Burnett. Yeah, but what places? I gotta figure out some way to learn how to steer these things. On the other hand, I think I'll just stick to repairing boots. Hey, Smiley, that reminds me of something. Before I go, I want to talk to you. Sure, if you want advice, I got loads of it. Come on, there's something I want to show you. You see that? Chief Eagle's killer left his footprints here when he jumped off the stock A. Now, there's a notch in the heel of his right boot. Smiley, you keep your eyes open for a boot like that. Might come into your hands for repairs. Yeah, I might find that any minute. Where'll you be? I'm riding with a small escort to take Chief Eagle's body back for Indian burial. I hope that'll convince him we want to be friends. How, Chief Running Wolf? I'm your friend. Last night I see death of Chief Eagle. Today I bring rifles for Running Wolf's braves. These good, how much you want? They cost many furs and beaver pelt, but you'll make good use of them. Kill bad soldiers and men who murdered your father. Who killed Chief Eagle? Steve Holden. He pretended he was Chief Eagle's friend. He tricked him, then had him killed. That's true. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ti volen te ome atawa. Au, vaja. There he is. Now's your chance, running wolf. But they carry a white flag of truce. That doesn't mean anything. He tricked your father. That white flag's a trick, too. Stop this. A chief eagle for burial. Why do running wolf braves attack them? Steve Holden with them. He tricked chief eagle. Have him killed. Who tell you this? Friend. Running wolf believed Durango. Friend. Uh huh. Then send word to your braves to stop fighting. And I promise to bring you a man who killed chief eagle. Smiley Burnett's patented mud remover and leather polish. Say, does that stuff really work? Does it really work? I want you to know that one application of this marvelous miracle compound and that boot leather will just shine fit to blind you. Here, let me demonstrate. I had a gal in Arkansas. Her eyes looked either way. I said to her, when I get rich, I'm going to name the day. She says to me, now, just how rich are you going to have to be? I says, I want 10 million bucks. Here's what she said to me. Who don't, may I ask you? Who don't, may I say? You say you will, you know you won't. You say you do, you know you don't. Declare you can't, you know you can't. Who don't? There ain't a man who don't, who don't. I had a friend in the calaboose for pilfering late at night. He's been in jail so many times they don't turn out his light. He said, Your Honor, I'm so sorry, sir. The judge looked mighty grim. I wish you'd give me one more chance. The judge just said to him, Who don't, may I ask you? Who don't, may I say? You say you will, you know you won't. You say you do, you know you don't. Declare you can't, you know you can't. Who don't? There ain't a man who don't. Who don't? Who don't? What's happened to the Colonel's boots? It's an invention of Smiley's. Yeah, all you got to do is just brush off the miracle compound, and Sergeant, you'll be surprised what you'll see. You lard-headed fool, that stuff will never come off of there. Stop. Yes, sir. Sergeant, that'll cost you a day's pay and your tobacco ration for a month. Yes, sir. Now then. Mm. No. Then the Durango kid appeared. 
Apparently, he managed to make a truce. Anyway, the soldiers will be back safe and make their own report. I can't understand the Durango kid's interest in this. Seems to be working for Pete. I wish I could be sure of that. What's that? What is it, Lieutenant? The men you send in that detail, sir. Poor devils, the Indians never gave them a chance. So the men will come back safe and make their own report. Lieutenant Reed, have a detail. will take care of them. Yes, sir. Of course, I see those brown smudges, Steve, but what possible importance do you attach to them? It's my guess, Colonel, that the man who shot this arrow wasn't an Indian. These brown stains were made by some body coloring or paint. That's crazy. The murder of those soldiers was an Indian job if I ever saw one. I'm inclined to agree with Cronin, Steve. Furthermore, I'm convinced now that the Durango kid is working hand in glove with the Indians, and that he used treachery to get them out in the open where they could be killed. They might have had a chance if you hadn't deserted them. I didn't desert them. Well, you sure made yourself scarce while they were in trouble. I'll have none of that, Steve. This is a grave and serious matter, gentlemen. We'll dispense with personalities. If you want to do the Army a real service, you can catch up with the Durango kid. Meanwhile, Running Wolf has left me no alternative but to strike back and strike hard. Cronin, you will remain for a discussion of plans and strategy. I'll send for you if and when I need you. Your regiment will have all the advantage if you attack Running Wolf's tribe at that point. Come in. Communication from Cheyenne, sir. Peace Commission. Send this reply. Indian situation worse. Peace out of question. The telegraph went dead right after this came in, sir. The Indians wouldn't have cut those telegraph wires if they didn't intend trouble. I'll go along with your plan, Cronin. Well, what about the Peace Commission? They'll be arriving right in the middle of a battle. I'll send Steve Holden to Laramie first thing in the morning to send a message to stop them. Tell Running Wolf just where and when to expect the army. Better round up some of the men and get after Steve Holden. He should be leaving for Laramie about right now. Won't you tell me, Molly, darling, that you love no one but me? For I love you, Molly, darling You are all the world to me Oh, tell me, darling, that you Sweet Molly, darling, say that you will give me thine, Molly, fairest, sweetest, dearest, look up, darling.
those instruments away and get ready to mount up. You said for me, sir? Son, I'm leaving Lieutenant Reed in command of the post while I'm gone. Sergeant Duff will be here, too. I expect you to behave like a soldier at all times. Yes, sir. You have my instructions in case... Well, in case things turn out differently than I hoped for. Yes, Colonel. They'll be followed to the letter. Good luck, sir. I'd give anything to be going with you. I know that, Lieutenant. I'm sorry. Goodbye, son. Goodbye, Dad. I suppose you realize I'm being left out of action to play nursemaid because of you. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I'll do anything. You'll go to your room and stay there. If you so much as break a rest for one minute, I'll treat it as a flagrant disobedience to an order. Now, get out. Yes, sir. You got plenty more, ain't you? Say, how much to fix these? That all depends. Depends on what? Well, how much work there is to do. They look awful beat up to me. Well, fix them up, and if you charge more than dollars, more than I'm gonna pay. <coughs> Till they cool off. <laughs> Give me any more trouble, I'll put you on bread and water for the rest of your life. Take him away. Wait till I get you in that cell. Kill Chief Eagle. Who says I killed Chief Eagle? I say you did, and Steve says you did. Sooner or later, I knew the killer'd show up to get his boots fixed. Then we'd have him. What are you talking about? You know, those are your boots, and they've got a notch in the heel. The footprints left by the murderer of Chief Eagle had marks in them, left by that same notch. If that don't make you the killer, what does? Are you telling the truth? You ought to know they're your boots. But they ain't my boots. I found them on the ash pile this morning. Figured I could get a bit of wear out of them. You found them? Well, whose boots are they? They belong to the Colonel Scout Cronin. I saw him throw them there. Cronin? Holy smoke. Hey, do you know what that means? It means we gotta get out of here and tell Lieutenant Reed right away. I'll help you yell. Hold Lieutenant Reed, Lieutenant help! Lieutenant you know what he done? Lieutenant call out the guy. Out the Colonel. Somebody, we got Lieutenant to Reed. Him. Hey, guard! Hey, come find the guy. Come find me. Lieutenant Reed, the guy said, find out who the killer is. Lieutenant, he know. You'll find out what KP is when I get out of here. We've got to try something else. Denny! Woo! Oh, Denny! We 
want to talk with you. I can't. I'm confined to quarters. What are you in the guardhouse for? Oh, come on over. It's important. Yeah, it's a matter of life and death. All right, I'll take a chance. What is it? Denny Cronin's a traitor. Yeah, we found out who the killer is. And you gotta go tell Lieutenant Reed. We think the regiment's riding into a trap. Now go get that key and let us out of here. You won't get into trouble. We'll, we'll explain everything. Oh, yeah, you're gonna be a hero. But I... It's to save your dad and the regiment. We wouldn't fool you. Come on now, Denny, be a good soldier. Snap into it, lad. Take the lieutenant into his office and finish him off. Make it look like an Indian job. Let go of me! Let me go! You're a traitor. You killed Chief Eagle. Wait until the colonel finds out about you. Take him to the hideout and keep him there. His father should get back alive. We'll have the kid to bargain with. Colonel. But I don't know where the regiment is. You can find him. I'll ride to Laramie and get Steve. Come on, quick. I saw it was hauling illegal rifles to the Indians. Is that right? A fellow borrowed that wagon from me a couple of days ago, said he wanted to haul supplies up to his rain shack. Now, if he's been selling rifles illegally to the Indians, you can count on me to help catch up with him. Where will I find this fellow? He hangs out a lot over at the saloon. Ask for Mike Gibson. Thanks. I'll look him up. Reach high, mister. You're not going anywhere. Take it, boys. Easy. Get over against that wall. Keep your hands high. Unbuckle those gun belts. Left hand. Record. The government's going to be very interested in knowing how you got hold of those bikes. Seems I got here just in time. What have you got there? Colonel Dennison's message to Commissioner Briggs, telling him to cancel the Peace Commission's trip to Fort Sanders. You know, Brecker, if the Indians killed Briggs and his party, the United States government would have to declare war on every tribe west of Laramie. We could sell a lot of guns. It's real important. I wanted to tell Steve Holden something. There's nobody here by that name. Well, there's got to be. That's his horse right there. I said he's not here. Well, 
I'll just take a little look around. I won't be... Bit. <laughs> I bet you was right after all. I just remembered his name ain't Steve anyhow. Bye. I should have guessed your part in this the night Chief Eagle was killed. Oh, ain't you heard? The Indians figure you're the one who led Chief Eagle into a trap and had him murdered. You know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to deliver his corpse to Running Wolf as a reward for wiping out Colonel Dennison's regiment. That's a good idea. Suppose you do get the Indians to get rid of the army in this territory. What happens then? Then the government sends in a bigger army to wipe out the Indians. But if the Indians buy enough guns, they'll still be able to make plenty of trouble. Steve, it's me. I've come to rescue you. There ain't nobody out there. By the time we got out of the guardhouse, they'd gone off with Denny. Here. Get this message to Running Wolf as fast as you can. You mean I gotta get mixed up with some engines? That note will protect you. May stop a war. I'm gonna try and find Denny. commission from Cheyenne. This is the last time you may have to play Indian, so spread the word to make it good. Thank you. 
You stay on this road right into town. Find the U.S. Marshal and tell him what's happened. Wouldn't it be better if I warned the regiment about Cronin? No, that's too dangerous. Besides, Sergeant Duff's taking care of that. You just stay on this road and nothing will happen to you. Now, on your way, son. some signals. I, I, I've got a message for Running Wolf. Yeah, it's supposed to stop all these Indian wars and everything. It's a guarantee that you Indians won't be reaching for my scalp. It'd be silly to be in this part of the country without it, wouldn't it? i tell you what it said, but it's written in Indian language, and I can't read Indian languages. Right here, somewhere. Oh, oh, I used it to start the fire with. What then? Oh, Chill. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be warning a regiment. I got lost. You mean Colonel Dennison still don't know he's headed for an engine trap? No, and the worst part of the whole thing is, from what I've seen around here, these Indians have got hundreds of brand new rifles. We better get out of here. <laughs> I could have told you that. sir. There's something gone wrong. What do you mean, Sergeant? We've lost contact with A and B Company, sir, and our couriers don't come back. Looks like the Indians know our plan of battle. Well, there can be no withdrawal. Success will depend upon the amount of ground covered in the first charge. Gentlemen, we will advance. Return to your point, Sergeant. Yes, sir. It's Denny. It's my son. Report, sir. Cronin is traitor to the regiment, sir. Cronin? Yes, sir. And he's planning an attack on the stage, bringing the Peace Commission. Here it comes. Get ready.
Uh oh. This is it. Here's where we get scalp. Our burr gonna stink. Well, I'll be doggone. Glory be. That's right, Colonel. Funny Wolf, this is a man who killed Chief Eagle. He caused all the trouble, and you Indians got the blame for it. Your friend Durango has made good his promise. Durango, my friend. You, my friend. Running Wolf think maybe both like brothers. Maybe more than brothers. How? How? We'll meet again at the Peace Council, Running Wolf. My government owes you and your people a deep apology. And, Colonel, I reckon they owe Denny here a medal. I hate to think what would have happened if it hadn't been for him. <laughs> <laughs>